An introduction to what I think is the most important uh, aspect of socialist theory, the labor theory of value. Uh, the labor theory of value, or the uh, LTV, is uh, it's often shorted, uh, not to be confused with LVT, which is the land value tax. Labor, labor theory of value essentially states that um, an object or service has no value beyond what the person who performed it imbued into it. Now let me explain. A rock has no value. You, anyone can walk around and pick it up. Something like a diamond or a metal ore or something like that has value because it is rare, which means you can't just go around and pick it up. You, can, you have to either set up some sort of complex uh, sluice device uh, to pan for it or to actually go into the earth and mine it up. Uh, same with things like diamonds, silica, things like that. Uh, things which are abundant, easily obtained, have little to no value. Think water. What we pay for in industrial societies is the convenience of having the water, uh, first of all, guaranteed to be clean and filtered, in theory, but also simply to have it piped directly into our home. Um, of course, whether that's actually uh, something that, have, that we should pay as much as we do for, welcome to a liberal democracy. But the labor theory of value essentially states that uh, an object uh, or service has no value beyond what the person who made that object or performed that service put into it. And this makes it somewhat difficult to assign a value to something unless you have a standard to compare your uh, labor to. Which is why we need, uh, which is why typically you agree on a price for your service before you do it. A wage or uh, something like that. So to kind of illustrate why under the wage theory of value, uh, or the labor theory of value, excuse me, um, profit and things like that are considered exploitative, let's take uh, a very simple situation. You make, you get hired by a factory to make widgets. For these widgets, you get paid $20 an hour. You can make damn it. I hate Paint 3D. It's the worst program I've ever used, except for all the other programs. You make $20 an hour. And you can make 100 widgets per hour. So you make, and uh, the company sells these widgets for, damn it, for, one dollar per widget now before they account for uh payroll what they have to pay the people they have uh each widget costs about 50 cents to manufacture all right so you make a thousand dollars in value for the company as a worker, 
uh, and they have to take 500 off the top for material, leaving $500 to pay for improvements to the plant uh, and to cover any payroll. So let's say you're in the factory with 10 other workers. So you came in and you're number 10 right here, okay? Now you each get paid $20 an hour. Remember, you each produce $1,000 of value for the company. So the company makes $10,000 in gross uh, income. Per hour. Now they have to take five thousand dollars for material, because each widget costs uh, fifty cents to make. You get it. In addition, they have to spend two hundred dollars in uh, payroll for the ten workers. So we're down to uh, so they're down to forty eight hundred gross income. Now, let's say that there is also a Foreman, who runs the shift, and we'll say he gets $30 an hour. There we go. And let's also say that there is... Uh, human resources slash uh, uh, accountant person. This is a, this is a small factory. Uh, and she makes, arbitrarily say it's a she, uh, just because every HR person I've ever worked with has been a she. Cancel me if you must. She makes $35 an hour. And there is a an owner... who gets the rest of the remaining, let's see, we had $5,000, 5200 5265 So that's uh, 3175 Let me double check our math here. Ten thousand minus fifty two sixty five forty seven thirty five. Okay. So the owner gets a paycheck for four thousand seven hundred thirty five dollars per hour. For doing what? It sits at home smoking weed or, or playing video games or playing golf or whatever. And I, I know, uh, and we, we can throw a, a salesperson in there if we want to, uh, uh, we, we can go ahead and say that they also get paid $35 an hour so that he only gets paid $4,700. 
even if he's investing uh, 50 to 70% of the profits back into the business, even at 75% of the profits, $4,700, that'd be uh, what he'd still get a paycheck of $1,100 an hour? For doing what? Because he took the risk of opening the business? What risk is he taking? If he had the resources to build a factory, I mean, it, it's, it's as simple as this. If there is no profit, then nobody makes money. But if there is profit, the owner makes money, ostensibly just because they could take a risk. These people right here are responsible for 98.9% of this value right here. We're going to go ahead and give some credit to these two. And uh, this this uh, salesperson, I also said, uh, should be in there. You know, because we, we, we realistically, uh, we're a capitalist enterprise. We need uh, constant growth. So salesperson would write. Sorry, I had to cough there. So, so the owner gets to take home $4,700 per hour. Now, keep in mind, this is a system with 50% uh, margin, margin, profit margins. Um, but I'm also not factoring in reinvestment in the business or anything else. And this is just a simplified model to show the labor theory of value and why profits are theft from the workers. Because the people who make the money are getting a tiny fraction of the rewards. These 13 people right here are collectively spl splitting a shade over $300. Very exactly $300 of the $10,000 gross income. There are some com there are some businesses that run on slimmer margins. Uh we're talking uh you know two to five percent, something like that. Uh, but a lot of that is because, again, that reinvestment back into the company, but also it's just, that's how they've got things arranged. And you also have to consider that in a profit motive, there's a great deal more, in, a, in a, a, an economy that is predicated on the profit motive, there is a, uh, need for a lot of bureaucracy to make sure that uh, nothing is stolen. Because remember, when workers don't work as hard as you want, they're stealing from the company. So yeah, that in a uh, nutshell is why the labor theory of value is, in my opinion, the most important uh, aspect of uh, socialist argumentation. Uh, and the easiest way of demonstrating why the capitalist mode of business is, is theft. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps the channel and the algorithm. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and leave a comment. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.